morning, everybody, and welcome to the Stitch and Post. I'm Nancy, and this is Knitting with Nancy. And I want to do a test check. Can everybody hear me? And if they're not online yet, nobody's there yet. If you see, <laughs> nobody's there yet. Well, we're a few minutes early, I think. Um, so hopefully, people will get on. Um, but I am going to announce, and I'll do it again at the end. Starting next week, we are going to start Knitting with Nancy, still on Wednesdays, but at 9.30. And the reason why is school has changed here a little bit, and we're adapting with schedules. So thank you for your patience through this. I'm sure some of you are even going through changes at home as we come and re-figure out how things are going. So a couple of things Ask them today. if they can hear you. They can hear me? No, ask them. Oh, can everybody hear me? Val's asking, can you guys hear me? I'm trying to really project my voice louder to change the microphone a little bit. And I'm hoping I get a thumbs up. And I'm, my voice is much louder today than in the past. So I want to show you some new yarns, something we're going to go over today for your sweaters or vest, either or. Um, and I want to ask how everybody is doing, and by all means... Can't hear very well. Still can't hear me Okay, hold on. Well. I'm going to turn up my volume. Let's keep trying. I'm trying to talk louder into the mic. How's that? Is it better? Terry, let us know. Terry, let me know if you can hear me. No, nope, they say they can't hear very well. Okay, I'm coming in closer. So we'll come in much closer. What if I hold the mic up to right to my voice? Because we well, that's just better. tested it and it worked. And I turned the volume up. So pretty sure her mic is not feeding into your camera. Oh well, you know what? Go. We're gonna do a little. Oh, pardon me. I'm gonna do a little. We're gonna do a little test. And I'm gonna hold the mic today and try to. How's that? Better? Better. Thumbs up, everybody. Terry, how you? can you hear me? I'm waiting. Yep, we're waiting. Well, I'm going to keep talking because I can see at least on this thing that my voice is almost all the way up to the loudest. What I do want to show is new yarn today that we have gotten in. The email went out yesterday. And we have two new Barocco yarns okay. that are new this year. The first is Summer Sesame, and if you recall from when, what I'm going to call Winter Sesame, it is essentially the same idea. It's a worsted weight, striping, cotton yarn. Drop it. We're just going to use the phone. Okay, so I'm dropping my mic to use the phone. Okay, tell them. Okay, now. How's this? Can you guys hear me? Whoop, sorry. Okay. Okay, so Summer Sesame uh, comes in seven colors that we have. It is 47% cotton, 44% acrylic, 9% nylon, 295 yards. So it's a good yardage for 1575. Um, Val is gonna tip in a minute to show you the colors but I want to move on to the other new yarn, which is Zinnia. And Zinnia is 93% cotton, 7% nylon. So the top one she's showing you now is Summer Sesame. This will stripe out, but it's a squishy, yummy feeling. Can't wait to knit my sweaters with it or shawls, summer hat, scarves, all the stuff. Zinnia is 1260 a yard, a skein. <laughs> it is a DK weight, so it would work if you haven't bought for these projects. You could do a really cute summer sweater in this. And this has what I call a slub. And Val's gonna go look. So it has like a little slub of color. So it's gonna tweed of two colors and then have a little slub. Our samples from Barocco haven't come. When they do arrive, I will show you. And I wanna show a yarn that we don't 
we, it's been underused this winter and I really want to visit it um, because it's a great transition yarn. It's mantra and we have mantra stone wash. It's 1380, 182 yards and it's 100% silk. So it feels really good. It's a good alternative to cotton if you want something. Uh, it's not as dressy because it is a stonewashed look. So when I think of silk, sometimes I think of that bright shine and uh, lustrous. It's a little, I wanna say a duller in color, more like a stone wash. And so think of it as your go-to sweater for the spring, summer, um, and even into the fall. Um, I love silk and I'd like to see it used more. And, but today what I wanna go over is how do you know the length of your sweater or your vest? Um, most people, when they read a pattern, and one of the first things I discussed was substituting yarns, and I've had a lot of com people come in and are trying new things that they never thought about putting a fingering and a lace together or two fingerings to get a DK and get a different look to it or a different fabric. Um, and Val's gonna go run because today I also have Christy's sweater um, behind the counter and I'm gonna show hers, which is using La Jolla uh, and Silk Cloud. Um, and she's also doing it slightly different um, than doing it in pieces, she's doing it all in the round. So I'll bring that up in a minute. But if we just take a look at the vest pattern, because it shows two different lengths. But what if you want an in-between length? Or what if you pick one of the sweaters, but you don't want it so long, you like things shorter? How is that gonna affect it? And what's it gonna look like? And how do you measure or change? So here we go into that. I know that for me, when I do a sweater, almost any sweater, I like from the underarm down 16 inches. So that is my gauge. So if we look at, and I just pulled a uh, little crop top, top off one of our mannequins. Um, this is Derecho actually from Barocco. Uh, in Remix Light, You are gonna measure, before you would do your armhole decreases or bind off, down. Now if I measure right here at the edge, if you look, my edge is kinda curled. So it's gonna be hard to get that. So you wanna pat it down nicely and lie your back, or if you're doing the fronts first, whatever you're doing down and pat it down, but do not stretch it to what you think it should be because what you're doing is adding length that really isn't there. And so you're gonna, if that's what you think, if you're gonna measure it by doing this, look at the difference I've just done by stretching. That's about an inch at least. And that's gonna change your overall appearance. So you want to kind of shake it down and I measure a little more in the center. So I open up and I want a true measurement. So rather than again, pulling this, I'm going to lay it and pat this down and go up to it and hold it down. And now, well, I've stretched it. This was actually at a 15, and it's measuring now closer to 16 uh, because I stretched it, uh, which is why you don't want to stretch because when this relaxes down, um, you're not going to be happy. So again, I always said I like mine at a 16, and I wanted to go a little longer. So I'm at my bottom. I'm gonna gently pull this up and I'm just over my 16 at about a 16 and a half on it, which was where I like mine. Now I know things are gonna grow a little, um, 
but I don't want to stretch this down. And I keep seeing a lot of people stretch things and go, oh, here we go. Oh, good, I'm at 18 now. Wrong, I've just added too much down here. And that's not my true measurement. The other thing I see um, people doing is going this way and pulling it out to lie it flat. And every time someone comes in here, they go like this and like that, and you've now changed your garment. Will overall it affect it, that micro bit? No, but if you're trying to get 16 and suddenly you measure, you know, 16 and a half or 17 and you start taking out and then you measure again. The other thing people forget to do and they'll take this on your lap and they'll think, okay, I, this is fine, I can measure this, wrong. You have now just stretched this over and watch what happens. And we use our lap a lot and we don't wanna get up. But if I do this and then come over, suddenly now I'm at 15. And a minute ago, I just said I stretched it to 16. So I have shortened it up a little by lying it over something. And sometimes you can lengthen it. You need a table, use your counter, use something, come in here, use a table. You must measure to a table. Now, how are you gonna measure the front to the back and decide that they're correct? A lot of times we do have to count rows, but I tend to take, let's pretend these are the two sides and I wanna see if they're gonna fit. I will literally start to measure half inch by half inch. Notice I'm not pulling and I'm going literally not even a full thumb up. And I am slowly working my way up. And I am unfolding and uncurling and I am not stretching. I am gently laying the two together because this is how I'm gonna sew it from the right side. And I want to know how I'm doing and if I'm off. And this is, other than counting rows, one of the only ways you will find out if they'll equal. Now, there are times if you've bound off and you haven't done this and you come up with this is a three stitch difference. We can accommodate three stitches in here or three rows, I should say. But if you come up suddenly with a difference of 10 rows, you can't ease 10 rows in. It's gonna look funny. So it's important that we measure correctly. I wanna pull Christie's out. She was nice enough to bring this in um, Christy is doing her sweater and she's doing the short crop, although she's going to lengthen it. And she is using La Jolla and I don't, I'm sorry, and here we go, and Silk Cloud from Shibui. La Jolla is from Ba Yarn and she's putting it together. And I'm going to open this up so Val can see it. And you can see this, if you can get close enough, that's the silk cloud. And if I tip it slightly, I don't know if you can see this little haze here. And that's the mohair with the silk. So, and it's not adding weight, but it is adding warmth and texture to it. And it brought a fingering weight up to a DK. Now, the one thing Christy had to do when we put this together or started, she needed to mark where her fronts to backs were. And then we had to refigure how we did the short rows. So if you're not familiar with short rows and knitting in the round, 
this isn't a project I suggest doing in the round, but on the longer V-neck cardigan, because you have slits on the sides, you could work each piece up to where the slits join and then join it in the round and go up to the underarms. Um, but again, it's going to depend on what type of yarn you use and what your overall look you're looking for. Because if you're using a yarn like Sesame, um, and we have Madeira and different ones, DK weight, and it stripes, that striping from the underarm is going to be different on the front and the back. And if you do stripes back to front in pieces, they're not gonna match. And you have to decide whether you like that or not. So I wanted to show this. Um, this, Christy's doing one of the sweaters as the sample too for the store. And she's really loving this. She came in yesterday and said, oh my gosh, I love this. And again, these are the clip and turn rows and you can see them here. So they're not noticeable. You do have to look to find them. But short rows are here. And again, why are the short rows important? We wanted that dip in the lower back in front so it lies evenly all around. So that's pretty it. Do I have any questions today? And can you all hear me? I hope. Again, I want to remind everybody starting next week, and we'll also post a note on Facebook that says we're gonna start at 9.30, still on Wednesdays. And the other thing I'm talking with Val and Diane about is doing a Zoom, um, kind of like a Zoom, not necessarily a class, but a get together where I will host, there will be a fee for it, but it'll be not a lot. It would be two hours um, on either like a Monday morning or even a Saturday, probably Monday mornings because I'm here. And it would be you and me with my computer and just to kind of have a get together and all talk and get some groups going again. You know, it's hard. We're still at home. We want to meet together. And this was a, a suggestion of how we could um, get 20 people or so together. I don't think it should be over 18 or 20. If you need help, I will be there to help. If you just want to talk, if you want to read a poem, uh, show me your knitting, uh, show everybody in the group what you're doing, and just have kind of a get together. Even though it's virtual, we can still all get together. As opposed to Facebook where you're listening to me, this was a way that we could interact again as if we were all here together so let me know how you think about that are you willing to join um, i've had some people already give me a thumbs up and say yes i'd love to hear your opinions uh, because i have some of you who are back east in virginia i have some i think up in washington california so it would be kind of nice to get people together who normally we might not get together anyway stay well stay safe I wish you all the best, and I'll see you next Wednesday at 9.30. And thank you for your patience thank with you. the sound. Yeah. I think Facebook and my microphone don't like each Thanks. other, but we appreciate your patience and your commenting, and we will continue going on, on like this. forward and working and smiling, and uh, Val and I will keep joking around with you all, and uh, soon we'll give you another tour of the store. Bye.